Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Go video. In this video, we're going to be going over the top 20 best tips for free-to-play players in Pokemon Go. Now, I actually got a comment from one of my Twitter followers asking me, any tips on being a free-to-play player in Pokemon Go today? So 2019 Pokemon Go. I need to save money for Go Fest, so I'll be going back to where it started before I spent money on Pokemon Go. So great question right here from Jonathan. Um, actually, a lot of you guys have asked me some similar questions in my comment section over the past couple of months. And so I really wanted to make this video. It's just kind of been a work in process, but I finally mapped everything out and I got a ton of amazing free to play tips for you guys today. I do also want to say that they are going to be in no particular order. So basically everything in this video is going to be very, very relevant. And, uh, you know, no one thing is going to be greater than the next. So definitely make sure to watch it all the way through. But before we go ahead and get started, as always, if you guys do enjoy this video, feel free to hit that like button down below. As always, I'd really appreciate it. And if you guys are new to the channel consider subscribing as well for more pokemon go content like this but with that being said let's go ahead and get started so right away the first tip i have for you guys is going to be to save your coins for special and ultra boxes the minimum that you generally want to have is about 1480 um that is just the minimum for the ultra box that way if anything really really good comes out you can just purchase it right away so right now we have an okay box it's not the best it's not the worst it's definitely debatable whether or not you you should purchase it of course as always you guys can ask me in the comment section down below should i buy this box should i not buy this box and i will give you my opinion on it i do respond to comments as often as i can personally i think i'm gonna wait off on this one it definitely is good you get 10 super incubators and 10 raid passes but we have seen better in the past so that's my own take on it but definitely you want to make sure that you are saving your coins for these ultra boxes it is the best way to maximize your coins in pokemon go in my opinion rather than buy items individually in the shop it's going to cost so much more to do that like you could already see right here the super incubators are 200 coins each if you go to the ultra box you're getting 10 of these things right that's already 2,000 coins that you know you would have been spending so you know that's about 500 coins that you're saving right there add in the 10 raid passes that's another 1,000 coins unless you add in the star pieces and the incense and you have like a 2,000 value right there so uh, yeah it's definitely worth it to save your coins for the ultra boxes as a free-to-play player this is the best thing that you you can do to maximize the coins that you are saving up and uh, you know like I said you never know when a great deal may pop up now the next one I have for you guys is going to be to prioritize your Pokemon storage and your bag. Now this is actually a video that I have made in the past so I will leave a link to that on screen right now. You guys can go ahead and check it out for the more detailed analysis. But essentially a common question that I've gotten asked many times is do you upgrade your Pokemon storage or do you upgrade your bag? Which one do you do first? Long story short, you want to upgrade your bag first that way you can hold on to more items and you can catch more Pokemon. This will ultimately result in you getting more experience and then later on once your Pokemon storage tends to become kind of full, you want to slowly upgrade it from there. But as you can see on screen right now, I have a thousand Pokemon storage and I've been okay. So, you know, you can make it work with whatever you have. I think you start off with 300 Pokemon storage, so that's a decent amount. You should be good for a while. Definitely prioritize and upgrading your bag first because if you could hold on to more Pokeballs, that means less restocking. And ultimately, you don't want to be restocking all the time if you can kind of, you know, save some trips here and there. That's ultimately going to benefit you in the long run. So you can see right here, I have 1,500. I am, by all means, fine at 1500 this is more than enough for me but i do understand that some people do want more 2000 is the max on both but like i said long story short upgrade your bag first before upgrading your pokemon storage and also you know save your coins for those ultra boxes as well now the next tip i have for you guys is going to be to drop into multiple gym to secure your daily 50 coins the gym game is very very important as a free-to-play player because this is the only way that you can get pokey coins in game and so what i like to do is i like to drop in at least four to five gyms a day and then that'll usually secure my 50 coins uh, depending on when I get kicked out but uh, I believe it's eight hours and 45 minutes to get the full 50 coins that's the amount of time that you need to spend defending a gym or it's like eight hours and 40 minutes something like that right it's like eight to nine hours generally and so if you drop in like four to five gyms and you're at least there two hours each then you'll get your 50 coins no problem you know likewise you could be in a gym for 15 days like this and uh, they don't stack over time so if you're in a gym for like multiple days you're not going to get like a thousand coins 
coins or something like that. The only way that you get coins is when your Pokemon get kicked out. And so for example, if this Pokemon got kicked out today and I had not already gotten my 50 daily coins, I would get the 50 daily coins as a max. I would not get more than that. So just keep that in mind. Like I said, I think it's like eight to nine hours you need to have minimum to get your 50 daily coins. So collectively that could work out for you. But like I previously said, you want to drop into multiple gyms. That way you have a better security going in rather than just dropping into one gym. But the next tip I have for you guys could actually work in your favor if you only have a few gyms in your local area. So the next tip I have for you guys is going to be to communicate with a rival team, basically for Team Mystic, you know, Team Valor, Team Instinct, whatever it is. Communicate with whoever are your locals and pretty much you want to alternate every eight to nine hours. This way, both of you guys will get your daily 50 coins. And essentially you could do every eight hours. So you could have, you know, Team Mystic from, you know, 12 o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock in the morning. Then you have, you know, Team Valor come in right after that from the next time, Team Instinct following that, then it just repeats over again for Mystic. You could do it like that. That way all three teams do get their daily 50 coins or at least they get close to them. Depending on your area, this will vary. But again, this is generally not always going to work. The main reason for that is because people aren't always willing to compromise. But if you can find a way to compromise with some of your local players, this is definitely a really good way to make sure that you are getting your daily 50 coins. Definitely a highly recommended strategy, although it is not always going to work. It really does depend on the players. Anyway, so moving on, the next tip I have for you guys is going to be to save your daily free pass so you can use it every other day. So what I mean by this is going to be like a two-in-one, right? So let me show you guys right now. And I've also made a video going over this as well, but essentially what you want to do is you want to collect your daily free raid pass, wait a day, and then use your free pass, and then collect your next daily free raid pass, and then use that again for a different raid. Essentially, you're getting two raid passes in one day, even though each of the free raid passes count for a separate day. The main benefit behind this is being able to do back-to-back -back raids. So for example, if there are two Giratina eggs that are kind of close to each other, and uh, you know one spawns at 250, the other one spawns at, uh, I don't know, 305 or something like that, ideally you could hit them in the same lucky egg. And so if you have your second free raid pass ready to go, right, so you have the one from the day before, and then you have the one that you're gonna get today, you can use the one from the day before, and then you can collect the one from today and that way you can do both raids back to back. It's definitely saved me so much time in the long run over the past couple of years and I've been able to maximize tons of lucky eggs just because of it. So definitely one of the number one things I do recommend as a free to play player. For pay to play players this is not really that big of a benefit but for free to play players you know it really helps you maximize your resources. Essentially you're just raiding every other day but you're able to do back to back raids because of it and that's the biggest difference guys trust me. And that actually leads us over to our next two tips, which the first one is going to be to coordinate multiple friend level ups under one lucky egg. Essentially, you want to maximize that lucky egg, right? So I have a couple friends right now that I'm going to be hitting ultra with soon. And so ideally, I'm going to do this all under one egg and collect 500,000 experience. That is a great way to maximize your lucky egg. Now, the next tip also kind of adds on to that a little bit more. So essentially on that lucky egg, for example, if you've already done your friend level ups, you want to combine any other action. So, you know, you want to catch Pokemon, you want to evolve Pokemon, you can do raids, right, for the free passes. This is a great way to maximize it on top of the friend level ups. You do the back-to-back -back raids. Um, your quest experience, right, so you have these quest experience things right here. You don't have to collect them right away. You can kind of hold them until you have a lucky egg on, and then you can collect them for double experience. That's a great way to maximize it. And additionally, you could also go through your stacked research. Now, when you complete a research quest, you don't actually have to catch that Pokemon. You can get rid of it, and then it'll pop up right here in your stacked research. Now, it will be in order, but essentially, if you stack up to, I think, 100 is the max before they start disappearing, uh, and then you use that on a lucky egg, right? You start catching everything on that lucky egg, you're going to maximize a ton of experience, like at least 30 to 40,000 just up catching Pokemon alone. That's huge, guys. That's like a great way to maximize it on top of the friendship level up. So definitely those two tips kind of go hand in hand together. Just maximize your lucky eggs. It's one of the best things you can do as a free to play player to get to level 40. After level 40, it's up to you if you want to keep on grinding for the experience. I personally do, but not everyone does. Is. But uh, again, great way to maximize your lucky egg and get the most experience possible. And the next tip I have for you guys is going to be to add as many friends as you possibly can that you kind of feel comfortable with and then send them consistent gifts. You don't have to send them gifts all the time, but if you can, this is definitely going to help you out in the long run because it's going to build friendship. And friendship is the best way to get experience in this game. When you're hitting ultra friends, when you're hitting best friends, guys, that is hands down the best way to get experience. And so you definitely want to make sure that you are sending out those gifts. 
Um, additionally, the next tip is also kind of related to gifts. You want to make sure that you're opening your 20 daily gifts every single day. For example, you know, look at this, guys. I have tons of friends that have sent me gifts. I can't open all of them, so I preferably like to send my gifts just because there's no way for me to get through all of this. It's just not possible. <laughs> and so ideally, I like to send them more, but of course, I do go through and I open my daily 20. It's basically free items, and as a free-to-play player, you should always take advantage of that. So I do apologize to anybody that wants me to open their gifts. It's just really difficult, guys. Uh, that's why I generally like to send gifts. So if you have my gift, make sure to open them daily. Let's get to Ultra Friends, and uh, yeah. Anyways, though, segueing over to my next tip for you guys, it is going to be to use the Infinite Incubator on your 7km eggs, preferably from International Friends. So I have a couple of International Friends on here. Let me see if I can find one. Um, where are you? So this guy is from the Philippines, I believe. And yeah, Philippines right there. So that's a lot of distance, guys. That's a lot of distance. And not only that, you have a chance at a shiny baby. So that's pretty uh, incentivizing to say the least. The two kilometer eggs, five kilometer, 10 kilometers are okay, but the two kilometers and five kilometer eggs, for the most part, don't give you very many good rewards. Whereas, you know, the seven kilometer eggs give you Alolans, they give you baby Pokemon, and you know, like I said, distance. People want the distance trades. And I do have some tips regarding trading later on in this video, but essentially that is what I recommend. Go with the seven kilometer eggs, and if you do have international friends, definitely make sure to take advantage of their eggs. That sounds weird, but you guys know what I mean. <laughs> now, I do understand that some of you guys don't have that many friends in Pokemon Go, and I do get that. Trust me, I do get that. A lot of you guys tend to leave your friend codes in my comment section pretty often. So this is one of those videos. Leave your friend code in my comment section. Do it. There's going to be tons of players. Uh, I recommend leaving your in-game name and maybe a way to contact just so you guys can coordinate for the ultra friend experience or the best friend experience. Um, additionally, though, I will leave a link to a Reddit page in the description below that kind of takes you to a trading page or more so like a friend page I guess where you can post your codes find international friends and uh, yeah it's definitely another great resource but if you don't want to go that far definitely just post them in the comment section down below I will allow it for this video I generally do remove the friend codes from my comment section not all the time because I can't go through everything but generally I do just because it's not relevant but for this video more than happy to allow you guys to post your friend codes down below um, with that being said though, let's go ahead and jump over to our next tip, which is going to be to only use your star pieces, your incubators, and incense during events with a bonus. Ideally, guys, you want to maximize the use of these items. They're not easy to get, and you know, you're more than likely going to get a couple of them from the ultra boxes. Like, I have these incense. What am I supposed to do with these incense? We recently had an incense event. Actually, I think it's still going on right now, the bug event. By the time this video gets uploaded though, it may or may not be over. But, you know, essentially you want to use them when there are events or for example on community day that's a great time to use the incense and similarly it works for star pieces as well sometimes we get the double stardust events for community day great time to use them other than that i don't recommend using them these are very very valuable resources guys i do understand that most content creators you know who have guides for beginners tell you to always have a star piece on always have a lucky egg on this is if you're like a really really hardcore player and you don't have a concern about money or you just have a ton of money don't mind spending it that's fine as a free to play player you want to maximize these resources guys because trust me if you're using star pieces outside of events you're wasting them you really are you know additionally you could use star pieces on like nine times ten kilometer egg hatchings like I think that is one of the best ways to use it as well. And then you could also grind after that, just catch a bunch of Pokemon. Great way to use it. Um, but again, you know, wait for the event, guys. Wait for the event. There's definitely going to be another double Stardust event, maybe even a triple Stardust event, sometimes on catches, sometimes on hatches. It really does depend, but ideally, guys, just wait for those events. As a free-to-play player, this is the best thing that you can do for yourself. Maximize your resources. And if there's ever a double Stardust or a triple Stardust event going on, you should prioritize some time to uh, grind because trust me it is one of the best times if not any to grind in Pokemon Go like you cannot play for months and you know you can come up for the double Stardust or the triple Stardust events and you will come up so much on Stardust you're gonna have a leg up on all of your friends trust me you really will 
All right, with that being said though, let's go ahead and move on over to our next tip, and that is going to be to hold on to certain Pokemon for trades. And what this does is this actually helps you secure rare Pokemon generally acquired by pay to play players. Now, what do I mean by rare Pokemon? I mean Pokemon like Shinx, you know? Shinx is only in raids. I mean, you can get it from 10 kilometer eggs too, but you're probably not gonna be hatching 10 kilometer eggs. You might, but you're not gonna get a Shinx. Very, very unlikely. And so let me go ahead and show you guys a great example of what I'm talking about. So for PvP players, they are looking for Pokemon generally with zero attack, 15 defense, 15 HP. Now the IVs do tend to vary, but ideally you're more likely to get this by re-rolling your Pokemon through trades. And so right here, I have a couple Pokemon that are trades for PvP. So I could generally get some stuff that I wouldn't normally be able to get because these are valuable to PvP players. And trust me guys, PvP players are some of the most hardcore players in this game. They do a lot of raids. They have to grind a ton for the Stardust to invest in the second charge moves and to power up their Pokemon, PvP players are generally what you want to target in regards to getting those rare Pokemon. Like, I have friends that do Shinx raids all the time. They'd probably trade me their bad IV Shinx for some of these Pokemon. Even though, to me, they're not that valuable to PvP players, they are incredibly valuable, guys, because this could reroll to 0 15, 15 and this could be exactly what somebody's looking for. And so, like I said, this is a great way to secure rare Pokemon that are generally acquired by pay-to-play players. You know, there's tons of other Pokemon, too, like Regionals are a great example. I recently got that Heracross. I'm trying to think of what else, you know, like Chansey, Snorlax, Gym Defenders, Good Gym Defenders, um, some meta-relevant attackers like Bagon Community Day is coming up, right? So Bagon is a great Pokemon in the trade. And uh, just having these Pokemon is going to allow you to get way better trades, um, you know, down the line just because people don't have a problem spending money on this game. That's generally not a problem for a lot of people. And so you want to take advantage of the fact that they're spending their money to get these Shings, they're spending their money to get these... I don't know what other Pokemon, uh, Absol or, you know, uh, Mawile, those are Pokemon that are exclusive to raids, and so you can only get them from raids, and ideally, they're not going to hold on to their bad IV ones, so you just tell them, hey, can you hold on to these for me, and I'll hold on to these for you, and more than likely, they're going to be like, yeah, sure, because they're just going to transfer it anyways. So, definitely a really good tip right there for you guys. I do have a link to a video that I kind of went over, going over this more in detail. I will have that up on screen for you guys right now. With that being said, let's go ahead and move on over to our next tip which again is another trading one, and that is going to be to trade distance on legendaries to get more candy. Preferably, you want to be doing, you know, 100 kilometers away, but I know that's not generally ideal. 20 kilometers, or sorry, 10 kilometers away will get you two candy, and then if it's bad IVs, you can just transfer it for one bonus candy if you're doing trade for trade, or if you're doing same Pokemons for same Pokemon. So if I trade a Giratina that was like 10 kilometers away with somebody else, I'd get two Giratina candy, and then if it's bad IVs, I transfer it for a third Giratina candy. And for those of you guys who don't know, legendary Pokemon candy is the most valuable candy in all of Pokemon Go. The main reason for that is because it takes 20 kilometers to get one single candy for a legendary Pokemon. That's too much, guys. So using your rare candy on legendary Pokemon, also another good tip. It's a bonus tip I forgot to add in here, but yes, use your rare candy on legendary Pokemon. It is the best thing that you can use it on. Don't use it on anything else. Like, I'm serious right now. Do not use it on anything else except for legendary Pokemon. Rare candy is hard enough to get by itself, and uh, trust me, as a free-to-play player, that is an extremely valuable resource. Only use it on legendary Pokemon. Now the next one is going to be to PvP daily with your ultra and best friends to get your three daily rewards. And additionally, you should also be battling with your uh, team leader trainer. It doesn't have to be your specific team leader, but the team leader trainers also give you one reward a day. And so that's either free dust, free rare candy, or sometimes even TMs. I've actually gotten some charged TMs from viewing PvP. So yeah, make sure to do your PvP daily battles, guys. And now I'd also like to mention that these next couple of tips are going to be a little bit more generalized. They're not specific towards free-to-play players, but again, it's just something that you really should be doing to take advantage of it. So catch everything. I know it sounds pretty self-explanatory, but seriously guys, catch everything. It's 100 Stardust per catch, 125 with the weather bonus catch everything you can. It is going to add up very, very nicely. Some of you guys ask me all the time how I have so much Stardust. I catch everything. I really do. If I see a Pokemon, I catch it. It's just as simple as that. And now if you want to speed up that process, make sure you're using the fast catch trick. I do have a video tutorial on that, which I will leave on screen right now for you guys. Make sure to check that out if you have not done so already, or if you don't know the fast catch trick. Now the next one is going to be to berry feed. Berry feeding is an incredible way to get Stardust, guys. So, I mean, seriously, a lot of people don't take advantage of this because they just transfer their berries or they just use them on random Pokemon. Trust me, guys, berry feed. It is so incredibly important. It's only 20 Stardust, but it adds up. It really does add up, especially when you're grinding out those stops. 
make sure you're berry feeding. Make sure you have Pokemon and gyms that you can berry feed, and preferably do it on meta relevant Pokemon. So, Metagross is actually one that I'm trying to get candy on right now, which is why, you know, this trainer has so many berries fed because I've just been feeding non stop berries. Actually, it's my friend Kat. Um, and so, I've been trying to get Metagross candy. You do have a small chance to get a candy from feeding a Pokemon in gyms, so definitely make sure to take advantage of that. All right, now following that, make sure that you're walking a buddy that requires one kilometer or three kilometers. And so ideally you wanna walk a Pokemon that is rare or it is going to give you a lot of candy. For example, one kilometer Pokemon like Caterpie, Weedle, those have 12 candy evolutions. Great Pokemon to walk. Pidgey, again, another great example. Um, and so if you want to farm the experience, those are Pokemon that you should be walking. And so if you're not level 40, highly recommend doing that. But if you are already level 40, you know, you could either flex a shiny or you could walk something that's practical. In my case, I'm walking Togekiss right now. I need to get this thing up to max, and believe me, I don't hatch enough Togepi. I barely hatch any Pokemon using the Infinite Incubator. Togekiss is what I'm working on right now. Three kilometer buddy, great Pokemon personally as a gym defender and sometimes even as an attacker as a fairy type. Another good Pokemon that you could walk this three kilometers is Porygon. It's generally a pretty rare Pokemon. Um, you're not gonna find them in the wild. You may or may not get them from raids if they do release that in the rotation, but more than likely you're not gonna find Porygon. So Porygon, another great three kilometer Pokemon. And the reason why I don't recommend walking five kilometer is because that is so much walking just to get one single candy. I mean, you would have got five Caterpie candy had you just walked that buddy instead, or you would have gotten close to two candy on, for example, Togekiss had you walked that instead. And so that's why I don't recommend walking five kilometer buddies. You can do it, I just don't recommend it. 20 kilometer buddies like legendaries don't do that. Just don't. It's not worth it at all. Just use your red candy on it. All right, now the last two tips I have for you guys are gonna be pretty good ones right here. Do not stress over hundos. I know a lot of players in this game stress over getting hundos. Do not worry about it. It is not what you need to focus on. When I lost my account 10 months ago and I had to rebuild on Eternal Maiden, you know, there were no scanners around. The only thing that you could do is trade Pokemon and just hope that you get something that's decently good. And so getting a hundo is definitely far out of reach when you don't have scanners. And not only that, it's very, very impractical. <laughs> so, you know, I have a lot of Pokemon here that are not hundos. For example, I have some Titars with the Smackdown move set. So this one is 76% IV, 14 attack. But because it has Smackdown, it's a really, really good Pokemon. You know, it doesn't matter that it doesn't have 15 attack. I mean, ideally I would want 15 attack, but the fact that it's not 90% IV, it's not going to kill me. It's not that bad, guys. Like, generally, as an attacker, you want 15 attack. 14 attack is okay, too. That's not so bad. Like, anything lower is kind of whatever. It's your choice after that. But I definitely recommend going for Pokemon with 15 attack, 14 attack. And generally, 60% IV is about where I cut off my limit. 60% um, IV or higher with 15 attack is doable for me. Anything lower than that, I generally just transfer. It's just kind of too low at that point. But you don't always need 80% IV, 90% IV. 70% is fine, 60% is still okay. Um, what you mainly want to focus on is getting those weather boosted Pokemon, those high level Pokemon, because when you evolve them, you don't have to invest any Stardust into them. So for example, this Pokemon is a level 35. And I'm pretty sure I caught this around level 30. So when I evolved it, I didn't really need to power it up. It was already at 90% of its maximum potential. And so had I gotten like a 100% IV Larvitar, which I actually think I did, and it was like a lower level, like it's a level eight, you know, that's a ton of Stardust you have to invest for like a very, very small difference considering the IVs, right? This one's 91% IV. It's like, it's it's like this small. Do you guys see how much that is? Because I can't even tell. That's like, that's how small of a difference it is. So you don't really need to stress over hundos. You don't need to really stress over 90% IV, 80% IV. And now ideally it is going to be better if you do have higher IVs, but it's going to be a very, very small difference, guys. The main thing that you want is high level Pokemon, preferably weather boosted if you can get them. But uh, yeah, high level Pokemon, 15 attack, that is what you want to be aiming for. Do not stress over hundos. Do not stress over getting a specific lineup with like 90% IV. It is going to be a very, very small difference. Trust me. I know this for a fact because I had to rebuild my entire account from nothing. And by using this strategy, I was able to get to level 40 again and have a ton of good Pokemon for raid challenges. You guys can watch all the videos on my channel when I was uh, playing on Eternal Maiden when I didn't have my main account. And um, yeah, I got a lot done with my subpar Pokemon, as some people might call them. But trust me, guys. 
You know, using this strategy, you're not going to spend as much Stardust, and as a free-to-play player, that is what you want to be holding on to. You don't want to be spending so much Stardust, and ideally, you don't want to be spending that much candy either. And now, the final tip I have for you guys is going to be to get a Go Plus. It is going to be one of the best investments you can possibly make as a free-to-play player. And some of you guys may be asking yourselves, well, hey, that's not free-to-play if I have to buy it, right? Well, it technically is. The definition of free-to-play is someone who does not use money for in-app purchases. Basically, the only way that you're getting coins is from gyms. And so as a pay-to-play -play player, you know, you are buying stuff from the in-app shop. As a free-to-play player, you're not. Both of you guys, though, are still spending money on gas. Both of you guys still have the option to get a Go Plus. And believe me, there's tons of pay-to-play players who do not even have a Go Plus. And I'm just like, why? It just makes no sense. Because Go Plus, guys, while it does have a high run rate and it can only use Pokeballs, the convenience of being able to just Go Plus Pokemon when you're driving or when you're walking and you can't look at your phone is significant. I mean, yeah, of course, your Pokemon are going to run away most of the time. But the fact that you weren't even able to catch those Pokemon normally, yeah, that's still an additional Pokemon that you have that you wouldn't have normally had because you couldn't actually have your app open. So personally for me, in the long run, it is one of the best investments that you can make as a free-to-play player, and I highly recommend it if you are a dedicated slash hardcore player. If you're a casual player, kind of uh, play the game for a little bit, see if you do want to continue, and if you do get to a point where you are a little bit more dedicated, definitely invest in a Go Plus. Anyways though, I think that is pretty much everything I have for you guys today. We went over a lot of stuff. I hope these tips were able to help you all out. I mean, I was able to build this account, guys, completely free to play, no in-app purchases, only using a Go Plus, and uh, I have a lot of good stuff on here. I have a lot of good stuff on here, and uh, trust me. These tips have helped me succeed so much in this game. I was able to rebuild my account too when I lost this account and, you know, I was able to get the level 40, 30 million experience, build tons of new lineups, and had I not used any of these resources, any of these tips, I probably would have not been able to do so. And you can trust my expertise because I've been doing this for three years, guys. Been playing Pokemon Go for three years as a free to play player. I'd like to think that I know what I'm talking about, especially regarding this subject. But at the end of the day, guys, it does not matter if you're a pay to play player or a free to play player these tips will help you out regardless. They'll help you save money or they'll help you not spend money. One way or another, you are going to benefit from these tips. I guarantee it. But with that being said, guys, I think this video has drawn out long enough. If you guys did enjoy it, feel free to hit that like button down below. As always, I really appreciate it. And if you do want to see more Pokemon Go content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well for future videos. And I will see you all real soon in the next one.